Somebody once described uh, governing uh, public official of the year awards uh, ceremony as the uh, Oscars uh, for state and local government. And uh, you got music. Fortunately, there's nobody who's going to sort of drown me out when I exceed my five minutes, but uh, at least not that I know of because everyone else has been sticking to their time. But uh, I think, you know, as any, as someone, uh, I've spent my entire career, 20 years uh, of public service. In 2016, it's going to be my 20th year. Uh, I've spent all of it in state and local government. So I know Governing Magazine well, and I know just how big a deal it is to be one of their public officials of the year. So um, I am greatly honored, really greatly honored to be here. Um, governing is the magazine of record for our industry, um, and I can't think of a higher honor than being awarded this uh, at, at this point in my career. Um, Medicaid redesign in New York uh, was what uh, many, and there are a few here today who remember back in 2011 when Governor Cuomo announced this approach uh, to reform, which was, let's try to bring the stakeholders uh, who historically fought each other over an ever-shrinking uh, pie uh, together to see if they couldn't come up with a plan uh, for moving the state forward. Uh, he asked them to do that in the worst budget environment in state history. We we're facing a $10 billion budget problem, uh, and Medicaid, which is the biggest chunk of his budget, was expected to grow 13% year on year. Uh, that's not a recipe for, uh, for budgetary success. Uh, and he asked this team to come up with a plan, and he gave them basically less than two months to accomplish that. And this team, crisscrossed the state, heard from thousands of New Yorkers, in fact, gathered 4,000 ideas from all across the state, and out of that came 79 proposals, of which 78 were approved by the legislature that generated $4 billion in savings for the Medicaid program and didn't take a single benefit away from a single New Yorker. Interview is that what I'm most proud of about this is that we did this together. This was New Yorkers coming together, coalescing around a plan in, a, in what was probably the most difficult and darkest hour in the history of the program. This is a program that serves six million people, provides vital services to the youngest and the oldest uh, in our community, and, uh, and it was on the risk of not being financially sustainable, and we fundamentally changed that course. We have a lot more to do, uh, so uh, I feel that uh, I feel good about where we are, but we still have a lot to do uh, in terms of really restructuring how healthcare is provided. Uh, but with that said, there are many people to sort of thank in terms of uh, my being here today. First off, I want to thank my family who, as was mentioned, traveled from all across the country to be here today. I'm so honored for them to be there. Their love and support over the years has been so essential uh, to everything that I've been able to do. Uh, next, I want to thank my bosses. Uh, I've been sort of unique in, in my public service. Uh, for all except one year, I've been a political appointee. So I've been at will, could have been fired at any time, which always made my family nervous. Uh, never been, none of my bosses ever lost. So I'm a little bit of, I think, a little bit of luck charm, perhaps. Um, but, uh, but, um, uh, but in that role, uh, when you're a political appointee, you get to know uh, the elected uh, uh, person that you're working for uh, pretty well. And uh, I really want to sort of uh, provide particular thanks to two individuals, uh, really the two governors that I've worked for most recently. First, my current boss, Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York, uh, who took a big chance on me. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, he brought in a guy from Wisconsin, um, you know, it's kind of like the equivalent of Mars uh, uh, to uh, New Yorkers, and uh, uh, brought him in to run the nation's biggest Medicaid program. And, uh, and he showed tremendous confidence in me throughout that process, um, and I really want, and I cannot uh, give him more credit, or and give, uh, give him tremendous credit for the political skills he showed uh, to helping us navigate this very difficult process uh, that we had to do with Medicaid redesign in New York. I also want to thank a former boss, uh, the former, uh, uh, med, uh, the former uh, governor of the state of Wisconsin, Jim Doyle. Uh, I literally am not here tonight, I, I would not be here tonight if it were not for him. Uh, back in 2005, he ordered me to the Wisconsin Health Department uh, to work on Medicaid reform, and I tried very, very, very hard to resist that man. Uh, I didn't, I'd say, as I told him, I knew nothing about Medicaid, and I was very happy in the position I was in. He told me, Jason, I need you there, and you're going to go there. And his will was very strong, and I was there. And I have to say that his vision uh, for my own future was far crisper than my own. And uh, I am uh, here to, th I really want to thank him for, for that. Uh, next, I want to thank my coworkers. And I think all of us here today know that no single individual in government ever does it on their own. We are all part of a team. I've worked with some great teams in the past. 
uh, but there's really been no finer group of, of professionals uh, that, that I've had an opportunity to work with than those who committed to working on, on Medicaid redesign. There are literally 150 different people who worked on various projects. Uh, over our four years, uh, four year cycle, we've, we've enacted, in essence, about 240 different projects. Uh, so this has been a tremendous team effort across, and I'm so thankful, and I really feel like I accept the award on their behalf, uh, on our collective behalf. Uh, lastly, uh, and you took a little bit of thunder out of my story, my parents, um, is that um, I want to, uh, I, I really want to, when I thought about public service, and why am I here, what got me interested in public service? And it really was that story about me learning the presidents in a row when I was in kindergarten. And the woman who taught me that, was my grandmother, Louise Helgerson, who's passed on now, but she was an amazing woman. She decided, I think, because I have no memory of ever expressing desire for this, all I remember is just learning it, but she decided that this was something that was good for me, was to learn about public service. And she decided that the way to do that was to help me learn the presidents in a row. Uh, interestingly, uh, her tools that she used were first and foremost the streets of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Why? Because they were ordered in the presidents. So we would drive the streets and she would say, Jason, what's the next street? As a vehicle for me to learn the presidents. The other vehicle she used was the 1945 version of the World Book Encyclopedia. <laughs> yes, the World Book Encyclopedia. I still own these encyclopedias. This is the very important books to me because not only did she teach me the names, but she actually read from the books and taught me about the accomplishments of these individuals, which inspired in me what public service could really mean uh, in a practical way. I, thanks to my grandmother, I never wanted to be a pop star or a pro athlete. Rather, I wanted to be president of the United States. Well, I never ran for office, and mother, don't worry, I have no plans of doing so. Um, I have spent my entire career in public service, and I really want to thank my grandmother for kindling in me at that very early age of six the desire to want to serve the people. So thank you very much, and I'm truly honored.